Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. I uh, hope everybody had a good trading day. If you are brand new to the channel, please like, subscribe, uh, share, tell a friend. Uh, it's all about unbiased uh, technical analysis on both sides of the market. So let's rewind, right? Let's rewind one day. Uh, a day ago, uh, we had uh, probably, you know, as much as of a, a, a horrible close you can, you can possibly imagine. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 or the Qs uh, took out basically about three weeks uh, worth of this base and closed right at the bottom of the range. And like I said last night, uh, you know, prior to Microsoft and Google, if this was any other night, literally any other night, and there wasn't any, you know, magnificent earnings uh, being, uh, you know, being distributed after the close, it would have been a 10 star overnight. Basically, what it means is there was technical damage, not only done. On the QQQs, there was also technical damage done on the SPYs, right? You had a lot of, you know, a lot of names that commingle uh, in both of those uh, ETFs. Uh, they really, you know, had a, a really, you know, a very, very bad day of things. That's the best way I could say it. And yesterday, uh, we saw a two percent loss in uh, the Nasdaq, one and a half percent in the SPX, and one percent on the Dow. And then Microsoft came up, right? Microsoft came up. Um, you know, Microsoft, Google initially. Uh, both uh, came out with pretty good quarters. They both attributed their quarters uh, to the growth of their uh, cloud business and everything started spiking, right? And the question last night was, well, can we hold this gap? If you guys remember that, uh, we were talking about this 12 and a half, 13 area initially. Can the bulls hold this gap or are they going to get stopped into this gap, uh, into the supply zone on the QQQs? And we got our answer very, very quickly, right? So this morning, Microsoft started going uh, absolutely nuts, uh, like really, really aggressively, right from the word go, uh, you know, managed to sneak nearby the 300 area. Uh, there was one specific pivot here. Uh, we'll, go, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but you saw NVIDIA start to rise because NVIDIA uh, is, in, again, this whole love triangle with Microsoft and Google. So what was good for NVIDIA, what was good for Microsoft was not good for Google. And you saw quickly how Google's gap got sold very, very quickly. And if you look at the daily chart, this is kind of literally the lowest close uh, in this whole formation. Uh, but the question was, can the market sustain, uh, sustain the move, at least from the Microsoft point of view? Can it pull up all uh, technology names? Uh, you know, because again, when you look at technical damage, and then you have good news. The question is, can they, you know, can they price improve and reclaim? They did not, right? They did not. And if you look at the majority of uh, NASDAQ names today, ahead of, you know, ahead of um, the open when, when Microsoft was really spiking, uh, you had a lot, of, you know, you had a lot of weakness. You had uh, the semiconductors for the most part uh, were down. Uh, you had uh, Apple, right? You had Apple, you know, not participating. This is what, when this is where the market was you know, absolutely screaming in the morning, you know, we were up, you know, 200 points in the NASDAQ. You had Netflix, which I understand, right? And then Netflix, I'm still looking for that uh, bottom channel to go high, to go lower, testing the earnings lows. You had Tesla red. We'll get to Tesla in a second. But the question was going into today, well, can they do it, right? Can they do it? Can they do it? Can they do it? Uh, no, they could not do it. Uh, if you look at the spies, uh, not only did the spies give up the gap, they lost yesterday's range and traded all the way down to this 40370 area which is the next uh, support zone right which is the next uh, 50 day uh which is the 50 day uh ema keep an eye on the spies tomorrow okay i will talk about men in a second but keep an eye on the spies if the spies start losing today's lows tomorrow for 40370s it's gonna be very very tough to turn around and go well now maybe amazon can save us maybe maybe uh apple can save us right now we are not price approving on good news and if you look at the scoreboard so far on technology, you had Netflix disappoint, you had Tesla disappoint, you had Google disappoint, right? You had Google disappoint. You can make a, and you, you make a case. Look how good Microsoft did. And it absolutely, 
right? One, one, you know, one, you know, one out of three, right? So one out of three is only good if you're playing baseball. One out of three, as far as the scoreboard goes, and technology is not great. Uh, the Chipotle uh, have a day for itself, absolutely, but Chipotle is not really uh, a tech darling uh, as you would as those other names. And the question is, can now Meta save us? So if you look at Meta uh, after the close, uh, you know, market deems it to be good. So we'll say it's good. I haven't even read any part of this whole meta uh, meta statement, but the stock is up 10%. Logically, you think everything is spiking with it. You're not so fast, right? If you, you know you have Microsoft up a dollar from the close, you have Nvidia roughly up about a dollar from the close. Tesla is actually down uh, from the close. Um, so the, the question is, can they be the you know the white knight? Can they come in on the horse and save the market this time? to be determined, but I feel it's like Groundhog's Day coming in uh, you know, from, from last night's video. And these are the key levels uh, that, that we have to watch. If the Qs give up, right? If the Qs give up and Meta uh, cannot take us, well, take them uh, to the promised land, uh, and they start getting below today's channel and start taking out yesterday's channel, then we will have a, a really good case that we're gonna test back uh, the 50-day moving average. Is, is that gonna happen? We don't know, but like we talked about in every single video, don't we, we don't, you know, aren't we, uh, you know, shouldn't we be prepared uh, for both sides of the market? And, and, and going into tomorrow, I am prepared for both sides of the market. Uh, I was more prepared uh, for the downside channels, uh, uh, one stock in particular. Uh, we spoke about Tesla, right now, right guys, for three days in a row. They do it for two days. There was a buyer in the crowd. They could not get rid of them, right? We talked about, if you, and I'm, I think Kyler already made a a YouTube short, you know, kind of where we talked about last night's video on Tesla, but they were coming in. If you guys remember in the beginning of the week, they were coming in for the 155s, the 150s, the 160 puts, short term expiration, the weeklies, and next week, right? And that buyer finally got cleaned up today. Uh, we talked about the bottom of the range on last night's video. It got below the bottom of the range. And the only thing that saved this today, saved Tesla today, was this linear regression line. If Tesla starts building below this linear regression line tomorrow, okay, uh, note, keep this in note. This is, I know I'm always a big, a big believer uh, in the options market. Guys, they were coming today for the 149, right? The 149 weekly puts, like, like this is the last day to buy, you know, to buy, uh, to buy those puts, right? With size, they weren't coming in with thirty thousand dollars. They were coming in with three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. So they continued to hammer short-term expiration on Tesla. And if Tesla starts losing today's channel tomorrow, well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of room down. You have this whole gap fill uh, all the way down to what one forty-six and all. Uh, I don't think it's going to get that dramatic by tomorrow, but hey, you never know. Then, then I look at it, I'm like, well, wait a minute, it's only seven points. So is it possible, that, now that I'm saying it out loud, is it possible that it fills in this whole gap uh, from the January 25th, 25 highs, right? Not, I mean, listen, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely visible, right? It's, it's definitely visible, definitely viable, and they are making bets uh, that are uh, in line with this potential gap of 146. So is it possible that Tesla fills in that gap tomorrow at 146? Right? Fingers crossed. But that's exactly uh, the market that we are uh, looking at as well. Uh, the fiasco, which is uh, FRC, continues to, to play out. Yesterday it was down 40%. Uh, after the close, they came out. Uh, they came out and said there was rumors that potentially uh, potentially the government was going to come in and take over. Well, the stock was down another 40% today. Again, there's a lot of moving parts in this market. Uh, I could see how bears in this climate are, are frustrated. You know, I trade both sides of the market. When it's time to go sell side, I'm always sell side. When it's time to go buy side, I'm always buy side. But I could see at least now the frustration from the bears. You see getting all this bad news and it, and it takes a Herculean effort just to get, uh, you know, just to get a move down for at least one or two days uh, to, you know, to, to, to get a little, you know, to get a little relief in this whole buying pressure that we've had uh, since the bottom of, of, of January 2023. So going into tomorrow, I know, look, I, there's definitely a couple of names that I'm watching to the upside. I'm not really feeling the upside. Let's, let's be honest with here. You know, I'm prepared for the upside. Like, look, in NVIDIA, if it wakes up tomorrow and reclaims the five-day moving average where it got rejected today, okay. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll entertain it, right? I'll definitely entertain it. Uh, you know, that looks pretty good. Um, you know, Owen, Owen has been a very, very strong stock. We've been talking about this nonstop. 
If they start the rally, starts building about the, the Bollinger Band, can this thing wake up? Yeah, it can. But when you look at Apple and can't rally, right? You know, can't rally. When you look at Google that gave up its earnings, you know, its earnings day, and the only reason why it stopped is this linear regression line, the same way uh, that Tesla stopped in this linear regression line, right? When you look at Tesla, you know, which, which is like when we talked about, is an inch away from filling in this gap uh, from January the 25th, how can you really, really get excited? Now, going into tomorrow, you do have uh, an important, right? You do have an absolutely important um, session for tomorrow, right? You got Amazon. Amazon was the big one. Uh, the notable uh, coal buyers today, I did see weekly uh, 110 and 115 calls. And we also did see earlier in the week 90 puts. So again, just to kind of balance out where uh, you know, kind of picturing where uh, the money is being allocated uh, into their earnings. But we did see uh, a good amount of uh, 110 and 115 calls uh, in the middle of the day. You got Snapchat, which should be benefiting. I haven't looked at Snapchat this evening yet, but I'm sure it's benefiting from the... Uh, uh, no, it's not. I thought it would be. Uh, I thought it would be more benefiting more from the, from, the, from the meta earnings. It's not, but they, you know, they... Uh, uh, they report tomorrow. You got Intel again, used to be an incredible, incredible uh, market leader back in 2000, 2000, you know, 99, 2000, uh, along with Oracle, Cisco, and Microsoft. Again, not so much anymore, and semiconductors uh, continue to bleed. Uh, you got AAL coming out with uh, earnings tomorrow. We have some call buying coming in. Activision, Pinterest, uh, Overstock, uh, Caterpillar in the morning, uh, NET, MasterCard, first. First of all, reporting today. Um, so again, you know, let's see, right? Can can Meta save us? We'll see. Can Amazon save us? I mean, how many how many light preservers do we have left? So again, take it day by day. But I am definitely uh, watching for a lot more value to the downside than there is to the upside. But if the market turns and like the video starts confirming, because we did see uh, some 280 weeklies on the video, we did see some 300s for Junes. I'm assuming that's going to be bet. Uh, into uh, ahead of their earnings in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but there, for, just for me, I, I see a lot more value uh, in some names to the downside than I do uh, to the upside. But again, I'm very, very flexible. Uh, I'll trade on a drop of a dime, depending uh, how technically the market um, kind of replay, kind of plays itself out. So uh, again, here are the pivots today. Um, you know, this is the big one, right? This is the big one. We talked about this last night. Uh, 158 50 158 if it builds below can flush it close at the lows that's all we need to know the close at the lows gorgeous trade close at the lows uh and again guys this thing starts taking out this 153 tomorrow man we could be, we could be looking at the, at the top of the range here at 146 for a potential uh, gap fill uh you know google you know google stopped right at that 103 uh 10380 trading down to 10280s before it kind of rebounded but uh lowest close in this whole formation uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, there was two pivots. There was actually one pivot in the confirmation. Uh, I'll show you back up here. It, it confirmed 99.10 after the 97.30 pivot. Uh, crowd uh, never got up there. Or Netflix never got up there. Meta obviously never got down there. Uh, spies, right? Spies, they flushed down. Uh, 406 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush. The initial move on the spies below that 406. Uh, went down to 405, then rebound a little bit, and then we closed uh, right at the lows here in the in the 404 level. So again, not a great sign uh, for the bulls. Um, yeah, so here's the you know here's the opening range, and this is kind of I I I made this little uh, little uh, edit. Uh, initially, I put 299.10 needs to confirm for a potential 306 move if everything works out. Uh, there was a sneaky, well, it wasn't really sneaky. It was the opening range high of 297.30 uh, that took Microsoft to the 299.50s. Again, that 300 number in the future is going to be uh, a pretty big number. And NVIDIA this morning, uh, well, yeah, this morning, 272.50 needs to build. Went up about a buck, but it still got stuck on the on the top of the range here, which I'm watching for tomorrow in case Meta does uh, pull everything up. But obviously, uh, the main focus continues to be uh, the main focus continues to be uh, Tesla. If there's more weakness, uh, I think there again, this could be uh, a, a pretty good scenario if they confirm uh, more downside to, to come. Uh, again, those buyers of the 49, uh, 50 weekly puts with size, as as the show as as the show billions set uh, billions right a wild bill right bill, dollar bill, you know are they uncertain? We shall see," said the blind man. "We shall see." Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless.
and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.